Hello everyone and welcome to the most complicated construction effort I've attempted in Kerbal Space Program to date. This is a three deck ship somewhat modeled on the Normandy from Mass Effect, uh, the first Mass Effect. And you can see lander cans arrayed in sort of an elevator fashion. And then I'm going to have the Kerbals able to walk on three decks arrayed as you see there. Of course the trick to this is just structural stability here, but also getting it to orbit. And there's gonna be a lot of parts. And I'm gonna have to test how how stable all of it is. You can see me testing it there with just the three decks. But of course, there's going to be more mass on it, so it's not an entirely relevant test. But it's always good to test in the middle to see if things are working out right so far. The Kerbal walking around on it. And here on the Normandy, there were two arrays of uh, people seated on the side looking at consoles and so I was trying to do that there using the solar panels as consoles trying to build interior rooms I didn't do too much of that but that's what I'm doing here building a little wall and this was supposed to be a med bay if you remember the Normandy having a med bay so I'm using the rover controllers as beds and here I'm starting to build the walls now, I've tried to put panels in front and wing pieces in the back to make sure that the center of lift is in the back, but the Mark II parts that I'm going to be using as the walls also have lift on them, so it doesn't work quite quite so well. But here I'm using this technique of, of sort of smoothing the lines out that you've seen in previous craft of mine. The trick is always how to make the nose. That's the cockpit there with the pilot and co-pilot seat. And... Yeah, the nose is always a tough part because you have to bring all of the elements together and in sort of a neat fashion. Anyway, this is how the stability is right now. At least it's not completely falling apart. I mean, the clamps are only on the first SRB. Those SRBs don't have solid fuel anymore. They're just as structural elements. Uh, so a bit floppy there. Hopefully when I've got the rest of it constructed like a roof on top and stuff connecting the two sides together, it'll be a little bit better, but tough to say. So I'm using the parts like that, and well, uh, things seem to be falling off. That's not good. But actually in the F3 log it didn't show that anything was wrong, which is interesting. Yeah, things just are dropping off. More struts will be required. Also, uh, we have to check how it is standing up, right? Because this is actually how it's going to launch. And actually, it's a little bit more stable standing upright, but that's before the engines are lit, so we have to take that with a grain of salt. You can see also uh, two docking ports on the side where uh, where our ingress and egress hatches will be. This portion of the construction was done during a live stream, by the way, and so this is all live. Here I am adding the much necessary struts. Uh, but the later parts of the construction I did off stream, and so you'll be seeing that for the first time. This is the roof. Actually, this part was done after I finished the live stream. I reshaped the nose. I decided to use the air intakes. Uh, and also, I've got an aerospike on the front as sort of a reverse engine, but uh, that doesn't work so well. I tried to aim it at the center of mass, but it's a little bit tough. And here, I'm trying my best to smooth out the lines on the nose, make it look good. Now, our part count is already quite high and we haven't done the back end or my intended wings, which are sort of like the Normandy wings, but not quite. I mean, the body is nothing like Normandy, it's too fat. But, uh, you know, I, I was uh, thinking along those lines anyway. The point is, the part count is high, so this is a test of my CPU, and we will see how many frames I get. Now, I didn't record the construction of the back end or the wings because I was doing that sporadically in the middle of doing a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so we're going to turn to the VAB with this fully formed, and that is what it looks like. Altogether, the the ship itself, which I named the Carrick, has a total of 12 uh, vector engines, and then its booster, which is a single really large booster, uh, has 9 more. So a total of 21 vector engines need to lift this up, and uh, well, here we go. I have to control from the booster's core at this point. I remember the the central core of this is those lander cans, and they're not oriented quite right here. Uh, there is also a controller on the Carrick itself, but it's tilted a little bit off compared to where it should be, so it's easier to control from the booster here. Alright, SAS on, uh, throttle is up, and Teski from my livestream is going to be the pilot. 
This is actually a second launch of the craft. The first launch uh, went fairly well with some wiggliness in the tail that I decided to fix. But it's the third time on the launch pad. The first time on the launch pad, the outer boosters uh, t was were wiggling just a bit and definitely would have caused a disaster. So here we go. Now I'm deliberately showing you the launch in real time. So no time compression at all. This is how it actually was because I'm really happy with the performance I'm getting out of my new computer. And of course, it's still really laggy, and of course like many seconds to one second, but this is 1,280 parts. 1,280 parts. And you know, uh, in the old days, this would have been impossible for me. And actually, much uh, lesser craft lagged uh, just as much the old days. I mean, 600 parts would have been much worse than this. So I was quite happy the way it went. As you can see, very stable, but the booster is sort of uh, structurally part of the vessel now. It's got struts running all over the place, uh, keeping things stable. Once it separates, it's going to be a little bit worse off. The wings are already a little bit wiggly, you can tell responding partly to the gimbling of the vector engines on the outside, for instance. The booster's fuel is feeding in, and also there are tanks on the Carrick itself that start out empty. Those were mainly the ones on the top to ensure that the center of mass was as low as possible because so many of the Carrick's engines are low mounted on those wings. So we had to move the center of mass low. But here we go, I'm uh, checking out the fuel in the booster to know when to separate. The engines will go out as well. The booster's fuel feeding in, and it is all done. Now I have to change where I'm controlling from because I was controlling from the booster. Now there is a controller behind the aero spike that I'm going to be controlling from, if I can get to it. Oh, I can control from the docking port too. But anyway, that, that's the control on the aero spike that I was aiming for. Okay, there we go. But unfortunately, it's sort of tilted on its side. I would like it sort of more clearly up and down. That's going to cause me some confusion throughout this. There's definitely some wiggliness, but not too bad. It uh, does have a lot of thrust behind it. The question on my mind right here was whether I had enough delta V and it was going to be close. You can see orbital velocity 1460 meters per second and I have about 900 meters per second of delta V left, it doesn't seem like I have enough. But what I don't realize at this point is that some of the fuel tanks in the nose have not been hooked up. And so I actually have more fuel than is being read as part of my delta V. But here we go, we're uh, getting close to running out of that delta V. And we are not uh, close to orbit here. Less than 200 meters per second left. All engines running, you can see the 12 engines there fairly well. I didn't really patch up the bottom side of the vehicle. Uh, that would be uh, probably quite a lot more parts. Oop, recoil there. Okay, well that's the end of the Delta V being read by a flight engineer, but... But not the end of my fuel, so I try and figure out where the heck the liquid fuel and oxidizer are. I didn't realize which tanks were not connected right now. I guess it, it uh, goes without saying at this point, but this is all stock parts. I have visual mods and flight engineer installed, but no part mods. This is all stock. So if that wasn't clear already, um, well, there it is. So that's why it looks the way it does and why it needs so many parts. Okay, I found my fuel tank. Well, actually one of the fuel tanks. A lot of the fuel tanks uh, were unconnected. So now I can proceed to orbit. Moving the fuel back into tanks that are properly connected. But I have to make sure all the fuel remains balanced. I don't want to start tilting one way. Okay, there you see we're at uh, 73 by 46. So I'm coasting to my apoapsis in order to lift my periapsis. Uh, here we go. 
and still need to round it out a bit. Uh, 102 by 67 here. This thing does not move very well. I've put some reaction wheels, but clearly not enough. It doesn't have any RCS right now, uh, because I didn't get to that part yet. <laughs> it also needs some more solar panels or some RTGs or something in a reactor core. Maybe we'll have a reactor core of RTGs. But anyway, I get to orbit 102 by 77 and decide to have my Kerbal, uh, well, float around. I, I, I temporarily forgot that we don't have artificial gravity as in most sci-fi games. Uh, you know, like Mass Effect, which just was modeled after, so it's a little bit awkward getting around here, a lot of bumping of the head. And here we go. That, uh, those uh, batteries and that sort of semicircle of solar panels is meant to be the galaxy map from uh, Mass Effect. This is all, all an attempt to recreate that interior. So, going down there, I try and navigate, but it's very awkward. Anyway, you get the idea. We are in orbit, but I, uh, I decided to try and de-orbit the thing. And so, that is what this is. This is sped up by four times, by the way, so the launch was not sped up. And immediately you see the problem. It wants to nose down. And it's not very good at keeping its nose up at all. Not enough control surfaces to manage it, and of course, again, no RCS, no air brakes. The air intakes on the nose were the first to go, and there they poof off there. The next to go were the solar panels on that ring inside, which is why I mentioned those. You can see, even though they don't provide any solar power from in there, uh, somehow they are exposed to the heat. So they were gone and then the wings ripped off because aerodynamic strain and all. And the video is sped up four times so the explosions sound like firecrackers. Now the body is largely hollow and so it doesn't have much mass compared to its surface area hitting the atmosphere which means it slows down quite a lot as it sort of uh, flat spins and the uh, descent rate is at 10 meters per second. Uh, maybe 12 meters per second here as we smash into the ground And I think the Kerbals assuming that they were strapped in probably would have survived. Teskey survived And so yeah, there you have it. That was my attempt at a really huge three-decker ship And I hope you enjoyed this video